good people of the internet. This is uh, Shady Dave here. I'm currently in my little lab. Um, the lighting in here is atrocious. It's a uh, you know fluorescent lighting, and uh, I got a big green screen behind me, which is always fun. But anyway, uh, what I'm doing, my project this weekend is uh, on the Make magazine. I think issue number 22 or 24. They had this uh, th these assembly plans for building a remote control lawnmower. Now, I hate mowing the lawn. It's ruining my shoes, and uh, you know I'm kind of out of shape. And rather than get in shape, I figured, hey, why not just let uh, you know modern convenience ruin my life a little more? So, I decided to make the Lawn Bot 400 from uh, Make Magazine. So what I've got here is uh, a couple of uh, electronics and whatnot. My workbench is actually really horrible, but uh, I'll just go ahead and... Can I flip this around? I can't flip that. Okay, I'll flip it around like this. Oh. Why don't I just stop and flip it? Here we have an Arduino and a little breadboard rigged up with some uh, some LEDs and this little guy here is a receiver uh, for this guy. It's just a cheapy eSky uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, helicopter transmitter. I actually had to break this puppy open and uh, rewire some of the the electronics in here so that so this potentiometer uh, is on a clean channel. One of the things I found with avionics, uh, you know, when you're dealing with uh, these kinds of uh, transmitters, is it will actually mix a couple of the channels together to compensate for things like when you throttle up it doesn't make your your airplane or your helicopter just sort of pitch out of control it'll actually adjust all of the other levers and servos and knobs on the helicopter itself to keep it stable I didn't really realize that when I purchased this so I actually had to find two clean channels and then I just wired it up to uh, these guys here so this is it's basically a tank drive system so if you go forward and backward um, on this thing here, it translates uh, the potentiometer and servo signal over there. I burned myself my soldering iron. Uh, it translates the uh, the servo uh, digital feed uh, on the Arduino into uh, a pulse width modulation that the wheelchair motors can uh, can read. Now. I haven't fully tested everything together, but to give you an idea of what I'm doing here, I uh, I plugged in my Arduino, and you can see my little uh, LEDs are on on the Arduino, and this guy here, the transmitter, and uh, the orange LEDs are on, showing that uh, the thing is in neutral, so there's actually no pulse width modulation being sent. So I turn on this guy, oh, okay. So here we go, see if I can get everything in the shot, and watch the LEDs on my board. Green, red, green, red, and it's kind of neat because it'll actually, uh, the pulse width modulation shows up. Um, yeah, let's turn off the light and see if I can get a good signal here. So you can see them here, and if I just ever so slightly push up, get a really dim green, and then if I push up all the way, it gets brighter. And if I go back, and uh, just barely back, I get red. And if I pull back all the way, it gets redder. So that means I have a variable signal go going there, uh, which is going to adjust the voltage, which is pretty cool. Uh, using pulse width modulation and... Uh, ooh, ooh, well, that's kind of cool. Right. Uh, it's really cool that, it, that at least this much works. Now, there's one thing that I'm actually having trouble with, and I'll show you. So essentially, this is the Sabertooth 2x25 uh, motor controller. It's, I don't know, it's a pretty cool system. Um, this is what uh, the guy in Make Magazine said to buy um, as an alternative to building your own H-bridge. This is an H-bridge, you know, it's it's actually got uh, space here for uh, for two motors. So here's motor one, 
here's motor 2 and here's where you'd uh, connect your 24 volt uh, battery supply um, it can handle spikes up to uh, 50 amps which is pretty cool uh, but if you look over here here's where I'm having a little bit of trouble this is where I would uh, uh, hit my uh, my transmitter controller okay the the Arduino that I that I coded up and stuff uh, so this is my uh, my my five volt five volt uh, power rail, and then I only have room for two signals, all right. But the problem is over here, and this mess of wires here, I've actually got here are my input signals, and here are my output signals. I've actually got uh, four output signals for this. So how am I going to marry up these four signals here with uh? these just two signals uh, where my finger is right here uh, I've got no idea that and something else kind of concerns me if you'll have a look at uh, I took apart the plug uh, for this thing we have uh, positive and negative big heavy duty wires which is pretty cool but then we have these little tiny wires which seems to support uh, uh, the two signal per per motor idea Um, there isn't a whole lot of detail given in the uh, in the plans on how to actually put that together, but that kind of signal matches this kind of board, not this at all. So I've got to figure that out. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. I think I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. I'm a little perplexed about the whole thing. I mean, I did spend quite a bit of money trying to get all these uh, materials together, and I have absolutely no background in uh, in engineering uh, electronics or anything. I'm just sort of teaching myself this stuff as I go, which is kind of fun, but uh, it's also a little aggravating when you know the parts I get that are pretty expensive don't actually jive up with the plans. So I'll try to hack something together. It just means a little more, a uh, little more work and research, I guess, in the end, which is always good. Learning new things is good. Yay!